Okay, so today I was asked to share about my the way that I choose to smoke here in my at my place. I use this, which is an amazing tube smoker. Amazing tube smoker. We will uh, put a description, some links to it, other options, ways to buy it. I just found it on Amazon. It was a little over twenty dollars, kind of thing. Uh, just basically, it's a uh, steel with the holes in it cap on the front and the back and underneath is the end so all you do is you take your pellets you fill it up light it up and off you go so let's go ahead and do that I take the pellets that I buy in the large 40 pound bags and I put them down to these smaller bags because this uses such a small amount, about a cup and a half of pellets, then a 40 pound bag of this lasts me forever. And if I'm always opening a 40 pound bag to be able to get to it, it takes forever to go through it. And you may as well just have a small bag that lasts like this very easily. Right, so I usually do it on the kitchen counter inside, but the counter is not clean enough. And my wife said, no, you are not doing that in the house. <laughs> she didn't, but I, I understood she wouldn't want to have it seen on camera. All right, so just simply, Take it and fill it up. I usually keep it a little bit away from the very, very, very top, simply because when we light it up, we're going to be laying it down. So normally I'll take that, just tap it down, try and get those pellets just to be nice and compact direct in there. All right. So just like that, see the pellets down inside. And then all we do is light them up the way I choose to light it up because my grill is actually down set in here. I can't uh, just set it on top. I guess I could set it right here and light it up and that would work. But I I'm going to be putting it down here. The entire idea, I guess we can talk about, the entire idea is that you place the, you light it up, so if you're gonna light it from the top down, you would then place that lit portion right over top of where the airflow comes in. So for this kettle type of a grill, you would open up the airflow underneath, and with that airflow underneath, it's going to feed all of the air it needs for these pellets to smolder. Now, this is a big difference from like a pellet stove, because a pellet stove, you're trying to get flame, and it takes a huge amount of airflow to keep that flame. We're just looking for enough airflow to keep it smoldering and get the smoke to come out of it. We're gonna start off by lighting it up really good, and then it's gonna, as soon as it smokes, and as soon as it goes out from the flames, because it doesn't get quite enough oxygen to do full flames, then it's going to continue to just smolder and create lots and lots of smoke. So, open of the bottom is the airflow, fully open. And then on the top of this particular kettle grill, then I'm going ahead and just closing it all the way. This doesn't have a very, very great seal on it. And so with that not a great seal on it, we're going to be able to have plenty of smoke coming out of it, even if I close it all the way down. So we'll go ahead, open it up. What I'm gonna to use to light it is my propane torch. Simple, cheap, easy, buy it on Amazon. Okay, I like to place the pellets in about the same angle that I'm going to be using them on. So they're gonna lay in almost the same way. And then I simply take that and just light it up. And we're going, we're aiming for a really good flame on that. You're gonna be be cooking it for oh about a minute to truly get it good and hot and just burning. This is a good time to mention that the smoke as you see it coming off of there when the flames are going off of it is almost a yellow color and you, you really want to be not using that yellow color of smoke on the um, on the food when you're cooking with it when you're what I normally do is uh, cold smoke. So I'll smoke something and then I will cook it after the fact. So with that being the case, we're just gonna let this cook and cook and cook. Once this uh, gets lit up nicely and then it starts to smolder, that smoke will go from a yellow smoke like that 
it'll become more of a, of a white smoke. Uh, you'll read sometimes on the internet about white smoke versus blue smoke. And uh, when you're cooking in like a Traeger or something like that where you have the actual flames coming off of it, then it's, a, it's using a little bit different technique, but the flavor comes out almost identical. So be aware that the, the blue smoke you hear about is going to be very similar to the white smoke that you get off of this type of a device. Okay. You can see the really good flames coming off of that. With that, I believe this is going to stay lit long enough to really smolder and make that a good burn for the rest of it. So now all I do is I take that and I set it inside the grill, turn off my torch real quick. All right, torch is off. I'm just gonna set that right over top of the opening for the air down below. And I'm just gonna let that continue. And you can see it's already going down a little bit because of the lack of the, the, the oxygen for it. So now this is gonna go for a couple of minutes and then we will be ready to cover it and continue with the next step. So I'm gonna let that, uh, let that go and we'll come back and check on that in a moment. Here, we can see how much smoke is coming off of this particular type of a smoke generator, this uh, amazing tube smoker. So with that, all we need to do now is apply what we want to onto the grill. If you're not afraid, this does put off an amount of heat. So if you're going to be cooking something shortly, such as you're going to be smoking some steaks or something that's some fish that you're going to immediately be cooking, throwing some charcoal in after you've got this going, then going ahead right now and taking care of that by having a little additional heat isn't going to be a bother. I'm going to do some cold smoking. Today, I'm going to smoke some sharp cheddar cheese. To accomplish that, I need to put the rack on and I'm going to put some ice over top of it just to try and deflect the heat as well as to be able to take that heat and cool off the internal of here. Temperature right now is about 62 degrees. You really don't want to do this over 60 degrees, but I think we're going to get away with it tonight. So here is the rack for my grill. There we go. You can see absolutely how much of that smoke is coming up out of there. Absolutely beautiful. So I've just got a, an aluminum pan here. You can see I've used it many, many times. And that aluminum pan puts the ice on it and then the smoke just goes out and around it. I try and place this pan so that the smoke does come out evenly on both sides, but it's not really necessary. What's gonna happen is once this is closed, it's just gonna fill this entire area up with that smoke. So here is the sharp cheddar. I buy the big blocks at Costco. Sharp cheddar, I cut them down into, I take that block and I cut it into strips about that big, and then I just cut those strips in half. That way I get a nice piece of, of cheese that is going to be able to be smoked all the way around and take care of that. All I do is take that, place it on here. And I didn't show it, but I do like to, to wipe down with a paper towel. Uh, there's a lot of things that don't come off the grill very easily and they're okay if you're cooking meats and other things, but your cheeses get some grill lines that aren't bad, but they're just not as pretty. So I'll take a paper towel and wipe it down in advance of that. So you can see there's room for, hmm, yum yum. There's a little piece of cheese left. You can see how much room there is. I've done uh, an entire block of the sharp cheddar and I put other cheeses down and around here. The real, con real concern is in regards to the temperature. So this ice is gonna take care of that. We'll close this up. And then we would simply leave this for the next three hours. So. With that in mind, we'd three hours later be able to come back out, take it off, and be able to smoke, uh, take that item, and uh, move on to the next step. This is beautiful. You can see that we already have the smoke coming out of the top there. And if I was to go ahead and I'll just show you. If we open this right now, you can see how much smoke is inside of there. And that isn't even as much as it is sometimes. So. 
I think we're gonna have a nice, good smoking session here. All right, so we'll leave that for a little bit, maybe three hours later, and then we'll check all this out and see how it's going. You can see the smoke that's coming off of this and how much is still there. This is a, about an hour later. I'm not gonna come back. We're not gonna be able to take the extra time to video later tonight. Once it's all done, it's gonna be quite late and I'm gonna wanna go to bed. So I wanted to show you how much smoke is coming off of this right now. See right there at the top, there's some smoke coming out of it. And this is what's escaping, even here all the way around all the edges. This is the smoke that's escaping after. So I'll put you back on the tripod. There we go, and let's open it up, and show you what it looks like real quick. See all the smoke coming out of there? That is a crazy amount of smoke that comes out of it. It condenses the smoke from that tube into such a small confined space and that is just intense. I'm gonna go ahead and close it, let it continue to smoke. <coughs> so, <coughs> something for you to be aware of when you're smoking cheese or a lot of these types of items that are cold smoked, then I like to use a fruit wood. I'm using cherry for this. Um, a lot of people like to use apple, some other versions like that. You want to avoid things like hickory or mesquite. Those items are very much more, uh, more bitter, more potent. So those are great for meat, uh, fish. Mesquite is my favorite of mesquite on fish. Uh, hickory is really good for some of the pork items. I prefer uh, mesquite is one of my favorites for any meats right now. But with the cheeses, I use the cherry, and then I have a vacuum sealer that I use for some of the sous vide cooking that I do. So with that, I just take it and make a small little package, vacuum seal it. And for cheese, it's very important to understand that when you smoke cheese, I smoke it for three hours, you can go six hours or more depending on how much smoke flavor you want it. I like mine smoky. I like to go more, but I'm oftentimes sharing it with other people, so three hours is where I stay. With that in mind, I vacuum seal it to keep all the air out and to store it. I throw it in the refrigerator for a week minimum so that if you eat it right when you smoke it, then it's going to be bitter. It's gonna have a, a almost tastes like an ashtray rather than a nicely smoked piece of cheese. If you vacuum seal it and you leave it for a week, then that just tempers through and evens out that flavor so that it, the smokiness is more throughout, it's not bitter, and it's just a fabulous thing. About one week is what I recommend, two weeks uh, you're doing better. You can keep it in there for a month to two months after you smoked it in the vacuum seal. Once you open it up the vacuum seal and start using it, you're going to want to use it in the same amount of time that you would open up cheese and use it normally. It goes bad fairly quickly, so you're looking about a week to be able to use it if you keep it sealed and try and take care of it. But if it's in the vacuum pack, you're going to be able to keep it just like that in the refrigerator for a month to two months. I haven't tried that personally, I'm just going off of what I've been told because it doesn't stick around that long. When I smoke the cheese, it's off and everyone eats it. So that is the, our enjoyment for tonight. That's what I wanted to show you. I'm going to go inside, have a snack, watch a movie, and then a little bit later I'll come back out, take the cheese off, vacuum seal it, and off it goes. This is one that I did a couple of weeks back, and we'll be able to just to show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. But other than that, enjoy yourselves, and uh, I look forward to seeing and hearing about your experiences with doing your own smoking items. Thank you much.